This is the inside of the Coachman Laser 665. If I firstly come to the main control panel, just here, we can turn the 12 volt on and off, just on this button just here. We then have over this side, water pump on and off. We need the water pump on so we can get water out of the taps and fill the boiler if it's been drained down. We then have the master switch for all of the lights, then all of these can be turned on and off on their own switches. Awning light on and off on this button just here. And then all other information is then given via scrolling. So at the moment we have the time just here. We also have a little picture of a plug indicating that we're connected to main supply. And we also have a little notification here just letting us know that the onboard fresh water tank is low. So if we now just arrow, you'll see we have condition of the leisure battery just there. Internal temperature. The water level in the onboard water tank. Pump selection. So at the moment I'm on external pump because I have the submersible pump into an aqua roll. What I can do by pressing enter is go into the internal pump and then we would then be using water from the fresh water tank if it did have any in it. We then have fill tank. So to fill the fresh water tank, make sure that you have the submersible into the aqua roll. And then press enter and it will then begin filling the fresh water tank. You do need to make sure that the water pump is turned on or otherwise it will not do it, but it will let you know. If I now hit enter again, I can now stop filling the tank. Next we have the settings menu. So again, if I now hit enter, we have display. So within that we just have contrast, how quickly it goes into standby when you're not touching it, etc. All just there, button beeps, etc. there. Temperature units from centigrade to Fahrenheit. Notifications on and off, so it will let you know if the leisure battery is low, etc. The firmware. And then just save and exit. So now if we go back to the beginning, to alter the time, just hold the enter button in. And then just use your arrows to adjust. If we now move across to the control panel for the heating and hot water, it turns on just here. On initial startup it will let you know if you have main supply connected and will give you an internal temperature of the caravan. If I now press menu it will bring up its basic functions. So the one at the top here is the thermostat for the heating. Literally just plus and minus, just pick whatever temperature you would like it inside the caravan. It will drop all the way down to five degrees for frost protection and go all the way up to 30 degrees. So once you've decided, we'll then move to the next one. This one here with a little picture of a shower head is hot water. So at the moment, hot water off, hot water, on and then if I press it and that again we then have hot water on a boost. The boost is extremely handy if there's going to be more than one of you having showers in quick succession of each other or if you just want hot water extremely quickly. If you do perform the boost and the heating's running it will turn the heating off as it needs the extra power. So at the moment I have the heating set at 28 degrees and I have hot water on but the system hasn't actually fired up yet because we haven't given it a power source. So we have a lightning strike just here, indicating mains supply. So if I want to run the system on mains, 
just press the plus button and we can run it on a low one kilowatt, a two kilowatt, or three kilowatts. So this is just dependent on the amperage of the site you're on to try and avoid tripping. If we do not have main supply connected, we can run on gas by highlighting the flame. And if we have both power sources available, we can run in dual fuel. So we can run on both main supply and gas, which again is extremely handy, especially in the winter months to get up to temperature really quickly. If I now press the cog, we will then go into the settings menu. And the first two here is night mode and day mode. So if I now click onto this, we can turn night mode on and off just here. We can set the temperature we would like it to be for that period. We can then set when we would like night mode to come on and whether or not it's for all days of the week or just individual. And then when we would like it to end. We can also by highlighting this one here invert the backlight so this screen goes to black and the writing goes to white. And we can also say we do not want any hot water produced for that period. Very handy if you are just using gas because that way you're not wasting it heating hot water whilst you're asleep. Next we have virtually the same again but for the daytime. prioritizes what the system prioritizes in using when in that dual fuel mode so at the moment it would favor main supply over gas if you were on an extremely low amp site you can flip it on its head so it consumes more gas and less electricity next we just have brightness of the screen we can invert the backlight all the time if we wanted to etc this one is not used on this particular model and then this one here is literally clock set time of day um, for when you're using both day and night modes. Most of these can only be accessed by the workshop. This next one is called antimicrobial. This can only be used if you are using night mode. What will then happen is um, in the middle of the night, the heating will heat. Sorry, the hot water will come on, heat up rapidly, and kill off any bacteria that may be in the system. Temperature offset just for the onboard thermostat. If you don't think it's quite correct, you can just slightly adjust it in here. High altitude mode. So if you are using the caravan a thousand meters above sea level, just pop this on to make it run efficiently at the different air pressure. Key beeps on and off, one single delayed start and stop to the system, pump settings, just literally leave it set to thermal for the heating, it doesn't need to be on anything else, factory reset, so if there's a problem with the control panel you can just reset it. External start, you do have to have an iNet box fitted if you want to control the heating and hot water via an app. We then have language, service, which is again more for the workshop, but it will let you know what everything is up to. Installed accessories, so the only one that's really handy in here is the load monitor. So if I now just tick that and I now go back up, you'll see we can actually access this one here now. So if you arrive on site and you know how many amps it is, you can select it on here. And because I've now selected, it doesn't matter that I'm now running three kilowatts on here. The system will not use three kilowatts because we've selected 10 amps just here. So it will avoid tripping. If I now come across to the bench seat just here and remove the cushions. So as you can now see we have a small amount of storage just in here. We 
have the back of the battery box just there. All right, water coming into the caravan just there. And then we have the Aldi boiler just here. All we really need to know about the Aldi boiler is how to drain it down for both winterization and travel. And this can be done on these two yellow levers just here. Firstly, make sure that the water pump is turned off and then just flick both of them up like so and then they will begin to drain the water out of the caravan. If you are winterizing the caravan, I always suggest that you also open up all of the taps because this will release any airlocks in the system and will help it drain off much more efficiently. When it comes to refilling the boiler, make sure that all of the taps are closed. Flick both of the yellow levers over. Make sure that you have a water source connected to the outside of the caravan. Pop on the water pump and it will then begin priming the system back up again. After a few minutes just open the taps, they'll cough, they'll splutter as they force the air out. Once they're running freely on both hot and cold, then just close back up again and then the system will fully reprime itself. We have a few gas isolation taps just here. So we have the cooker, heating and hot water and the fridge. They are all in the on position and quite frankly they can stay like that. I always say if you do smell gas in the caravan, go to the source and turn the gas bottle off. We have the consumer unit just here. So we have in this section just here the battery charger. So do make sure that nothing is obstructing this or otherwise it will overheat. And if I then just drop the front here, we then have the front of the consumer unit. So we have the main strip switches just here. So we have all of the individual MCBs and they're all labeled up. And then we have the main RCD and test button just here. So if anything is not working on main supply, just check to see if you've tripped. And then beneath that we have the 12 volt fuses. And again, they're all labeled up. So if anything is not working on 12 volt, just check to see if you have blown a fuse. Underneath the other bench seat, we literally have storage. We then have the radio just here. It is USB and auxiliary compatible. SRC turns it on and off. Change tracks, search for radio stations just on here. If you need to get into its menu, just press the volume button in and then just navigate by twisting. We then have back button just here. And then just back off again just here. Beside this, we then have the location of the television aerial. So to raise the mast, just undo the collar just here and then pop it up and then you can twist it into the position that you require. This green window here represents the back of the aerial so you know which way it's pointing in and it's actually in H for horizontal at the moment. What we can do by turning this tail here is actually flip the aerial into the vertical position for additional tuning. Do make sure that the aerial is down for travel. The digital amplifier for the aerial is just here, on and off on the top, and then control the boost on the inner dial just here. Sync. And then we have the microwave. So this will work when we are hooked up to main supply. Do make sure that the contents is removed for travel. 
we have quick start just here and stop then we have power settings etc wait time defrost all the normal bits and bobs that you find on most modern microwaves beneath that is the hob so we have the electric hot plate just here again like the microwave will work when hooked up to mains electricity and it operates just here everything else is then gas so it's just push in, twist and push the igniter Beneath that we then have the grill and again just push in, twist and push the igniter. And then the oven. storage beneath the oven but you'll also find a plug plugged in which is just for the electric hot plate TV bracket just here and then we have two USB charge points main socket there, main socket there 12 volt socket and then we have both satellite and TV connections just here freestanding table and just there and then we have the Dometic fridge freezer so on and off just here this is an automatic fridge freezer so as long as you are on the auto setting it will find the best power source it can for you so because we're currently hooked up to main supply this put us onto mains with a little picture of the two pin plug. If I was to now disconnect us from the mains, it would then automatically attempt to fire itself up onto gas. And as soon as we hitch up to a tow vehicle, it will then automatically switch over to 12 volt maintain to keep itself cold whilst on the move. To change anything, just press the button in and then rotate. So the first one just here is temperature control. So if I now click again, we can now adjust it. After that, we can take it out of auto if we want to. So again, if I now click, I can manually put it onto 12 volt maintain, manually put it onto gas, manually put it onto mains. And if I don't want to change anything, I can then just enter back out again. Next we just have the illumination of the panel itself, whether or not you want it to beep every time you press a button. Fan speed and anti-condensation jacket on and off just there. The anti-condensation jacket really needs to be on if you're using the caravan in warmer climate. This will stop a build up of condensation behind the unit which would then run down and form a puddle. Freezer compartment at the top and then the fridge itself beneath. Washroom just here. So we have the basin and the shower cubicle just here. Do make sure that the shower screen is clipped back for travel. Wardrobe just here and within here we have the header tank for the Aldi system. So we just need to make sure that the heating solution is between the minimum and the maximum. 
Always take your reading once the heating is up to temperature as it will expand in the tank. If it does need topping up you can do this yourself just by unscrewing the top just here and then popping in the solution. Do make sure that you're using the Aldi pink top up solution if you are going to do this. Fit for toilet just here. So to open to the cassette just slide the grey lever across push to flush on the top and then close back up again if this has been left open and you try to remove the cassette from the outside it will not come out so if you do feel resistance just make sure that nobody's left this open level indicator just here so we will get an illumination when the cassette needs emptying the bedroom so we have storage underneath this single bed also underneath here we have the onboard water tank so to drain the onboard water tank down all we need to do is just pull just here We also have just here the pressure switch for the pump itself. So if you are finding that the pump is running way longer than it should once you've closed the taps, you can just slightly adjust it just there. We then have the solenoid just there. So if you're using the director tap hose, the surge dampener just there as well. TV bracket again just there so if you've got a TV installed on the bracket you just slide it off and then slide it into here if you want to watch television in bed and as you can see you have the connection points just there again storage underneath this bed as well Omnivent fan above my head. So to operate this, just wind just here. Middle button then turns the unit on. And then we have arrows out for extraction and arrows in for cooling. Variable fan speed just by pressing. Do make sure that all the roof vents are shut for travel. 